So hi everyone um, and welcome to the um, Live Better, Feel Better membership group guest speaker. And today we're talking to Sarah from Perfect um, Pilates and she's going to be giving us some tips and stretches on, it was, was it back and neck and that's yeah. correct, yeah? General kind of neck, back, shoulder pain, um, postural advice really as well. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it over to you. I will make you host and then um, we can all just chip in and ask as you go along. Is that all right? Or do you want us to wait till the end? Um, you can, no, uh, asking as you, as you go along is fine. Oh, we've got someone else okay. joining us. Brilliant. Right. Hi, Andy. Oh, there he is. Hi, Andy. Hi, hello, hello. Hi. Hello. We were, I was just, um, oh, let me hang it. Um, I was just introducing um, my members because this is for my membership group, uh, which is a monthly membership and it's called Live Better, Feel Better. And each month you get a um, meditation, a guided meditation comes in. You have master classes that I do on lots of different things on how to stay productive. Um, this month I was doing hand reflexology um, for doing your back and neck and everything as well that you can do at your desk or while watching TV. Mm -hmm. um, so each month there's a different topic. Um, we also have live chats if anyone has any um, coaching things they want to talk about. And then we have a guest speaker each month. And we're lucky this week and uh, this month we've got Sarah with us. So I will just pass you over so she can get going. All right. Thank you. So there you go. Oh, you host. I'm, I'm being told that Andy's the host. That's ah, I do the wrong one. Put me on the spot. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> tell them everything I've taught you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I haven't prepared a thing. <laughs> Hang on. Is it Andy? You might have to. Do you have to make rules? Can you make? Sorry. Don't worry. Could you tick to make uh, Sarah host? It must have jumped as you come in. Do you know how to do that, Andy? No, I'm looking to, now. If you if you go, can you see where you've got participants? Yeah. If you press that, yeah. the, the, the barrel. There, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. As Anne and I are often reflecting, these technology things, they happen all the time. We're all <laughs> yeah. learning as we go. <laughs> the amount of times I've come on class and go, oh, Zoom's changed something again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of background to, to me and what I do. There's someone coming in. I just admit people as they come in. Judith, Judith Flanagan. Okay, um, I'll just start. So I, um, the reason that I'm kind of really interested in trying to help people understand posture and postural pain. Hi, Judith. Hiya. Hiya. Is um, I actually I haven't always been a Pilates teacher. Let's cut off. I was um, what I worked in corporate land since kind of leaving leaving college. Um, I worked office jobs or e office job in one company for a long time for about 16 years and I've always been interested in just like quite an energetic person but then I got just so into work so into the job um, that I was just pretty much at a desk for about 12 hours a day sometimes less but often longer and you know like sit on call after call and meetings constantly typing whatever even even holding a phone like this while typing in a meeting for a long time. And then, <laughs> <laughs> for ages. And then eventually thought a headset's a good idea, but that probably took me about 10 years to work that out soon. 
So um, I understand about the impact that our posture, so standing, being seated, and just kind of how we walk and hold ourselves has on the body. But I didn't used to understand that. I didn't get it. But I was quite young when, so I think about 26, 27, when I just thought, really should get into some sort of exercise routine before I hit 30. I should try and like get in shape. So I thought I was going to be going to doing all of these like cardio classes in the gym and what have you. And I did and I enjoyed that. But I tried Pilates. Didn't know much about it. And I've done some yoga, but I just completely fell in love. And the main thing at the time, the main thing was how much you've got to focus on and how much you've got to think about movement, breathing, how to engage the core muscles, making sure that they try and stay switched on the whole time, that an hour would go by and I hadn't worried about anything, except have I just let my core muscles go? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't, um, I found like, oh, there's an hour where I haven't stressed about a project on a Sunday morning where I'd usually be stressing about work. It was like, oh, I haven't stressed and I've come out really calm. And it took a while and then I realised, oh, that pain that I used to get on my neck and the pain I used to get on my shoulders and everything just started to ease. And I look back at photographs of what my posture was. I got a lovely photograph of when I was bridesmaid with my brother standing like this, like really hunched up. Like 25, 25 standing like, mm. and then it, in, it was probably about three years into doing Pilates that I, then look back at some photos and thought wow look at that now because my posture is just naturally like this and yeah it's just to learn well actually that's just how the muscles balanced hold the skeleton pulling it forward or being able to have the strength to pull it back and open the front of the chest and all of that so I fell in love with it um was in quite a stressful job and loved what what I was doing in my Pilates classes only once or twice a week. And um, anyway, I decided that I thought I wanted to teach Pilates and that I must be having a breakdown. So I put that to the back of mind for about a year. Um, and it's like the old cliche, if I was having a breakthrough, not a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> and I went through this whole period in my life where um, the job that I loved, I no longer loved. So everything that I was given to it and everything that I was allowing it to, kind of to take from my life including not really having that much of a social life and not really feeling like I was being a good friend or family member and all of that because everything was work and stress and health started to really suffer in a number of ways and my dad was really really ill um dying ill so I just it kind of took something like that for me to just realize like I need to leave this life's too short and I'm going to go train as a Pilates teacher and um and then just to help to see kind of helping people with um, their posture and realize that really small things can make such a change. So what I'd really like to kind of focus on today is just to do a little bit of explanation of um, how we start to get this postural pain. And maybe you can have a think about what might be affecting your posture, what might be affecting your pain and what you could change in your posture, your daily habits, the way you sit, the way you work. And especially now that a lot of us have been forced to work from home in less than ideal work set up environments, like people sat at dining tables and makeshift desk kind of setups and uh, dreaded if anybody sat on a laptop sat on their sofa. Because <laughs> <laughs> if that's happening, head is down. You've like really got to stack the laptop up, head is down. And that's a lot of strain on the back of your neck. So generally, I'm going to be talking about, you'll find there's a pattern. Head's quite a heavy thing. And these are really small bones. So the, the spine, thin at the top and gets wider at the base, basically, because of that, those stronger bones needed at the bottom. If you think about foundations for a house. Um, so the, the top here, they're really, really small little bones. And they have to hold this heavy thing, falling ball up. And when we're sat, gravity's kind of working against us and we let our head come forward and looking down. And if you think about when you're on your phone and we stand and we're looking down all the time, it's a lot of strain on these muscles down the back of the neck. Right. And we kind of just end up 
giving in and really overstretching them. And it's like, if you think about pulling an elastic band, it can only go so far, not to say it's gonna snap, but just that that's a lot of pressure. And if we're never allowing it to come back and reset to where it should be, when that's sort of when we start to feel the pain. So often people say to me, I've been told it's postural pain, but I'm really not sure, or you're, I'll suggest people it's postural pain, but they'll say, I'm really not sure because it's only just started to come on in the last, and they'll say, oh, it's come on all of a sudden, there's pain in the neck, pain in between the shoulder blades, sometimes it's like middle of the back, lower back. So people often try, like, think something must have happened, something must have happened to cause that. Andy's a really good example of this, actually, just to point him out. So <laughs> Andy, <laughs> When I first met Andy, he talked about, I'm going to just out, you know, throwing his young child on the bed, like playing and throwing on the bed and all the back went. But actually it would have been the, the years of um, like postural habits, essentially, that caused there to be a weakness there. And then that kind of ac action was like the straw that broke the Andy's back or whoever's, <laughs> whoever it was. Because so a lot of people will say, um, bending down to get food out of the oven and as they try and come back up it hurts or doing, doing something the shoelace, the isn't it? doing your shoelace Sorry. stuff is doing your shoelace stuff is one of the most common things yep. to stick your disc yeah it's because got tight and tight and it pops isn't it yeah because we just bend over without thinking about it and then try and come back up not perhaps in the best way and not realizing how much load that we've taken into that lower back area um and, and so just trying to raise awareness of that and give you some practical things in everyday life. So the general kind of general things are the, the normal causes or the kind of top two causes of, of back pain or neck pain, anything like that, any pain in the body is lack of movement, lack of mobility. So if you think about being stuck at a desk, arms out in front, head down, there's not a lot of movement there. We're not really rotating through the spine. We're not really moving the head very far. There's quite a small range of movement. So neck pain, all that kind of thing. And the arms are in front, which overstretches the muscles in the back of the shoulders as well. A lot of people end up with like rotator cuff injuries from just over stretching as well, not having any strength there. So it's usually lack of mobility, lack of movement. So we just kind of stiffen up and trying to move outside of the range of movement feels painful, so we don't do it. And lack of strength or stability. So often what people will do is, and it will feel like they need to stretch, they feel like they need a massage, and then that'll feel really good for maybe a day or two, and then the pain starts to come back again, because it's just a short term release. Actually, what we often need is this front section needs to be massaged. So if, if anybody ever did it, if you allowed someone to kind of massage around the chest mus muscles and in the front of the shoulder and down the front of the arm, that would probably feel quite uh, tense and painful and because these are the muscles that shorten and tighten so I'm just going to pop I'm going to try and screen and uh, share my screen now if that's okay with just an image of how posture affects us so she says screen Can you see a PowerPoint that talks about poor posture and its effects? Yep. Yep. Good. Do you want to put it onto full screen? Because we might be able to read it a bit better then. Well, how do we do that? Up in the corner should be is um the left hand left hand side. There should be a screen. The one on the right next to the um arrow. No. On Zoom? Oh no, on your um, PowerPoint, sorry. Oh, right, sorry. The red line across the top. Yeah, across. No, the other side. Not that side. Mm. That one, that D. Does that yeah, work? Yeah. Is that better? Yep. Okay. So the picture of the man and the kind of building blocks to the right. So there's a whole load of um, stuff down the side there, but basically that's 
some of what I've already talked about. So um, the key to good posture is having balance in the muscles, which I'll go into a little bit more, and flexibility. So we need balance down the front and back of the body. So key points on our posture are that our earlobes, shoulders, hip bones and ankles should have like a nice plumb line running down through them, a nice straight line. If you look at this example of um, the person standing there, slightly exaggerated, but that is quite a common posture that I see anyway in clients. Um, the spine's not straight at all. So it should have natural curves in the back of the neck, curves again around the shoulders and then into the lower back, natural gentle curves, not the excessive kind of zigzag curves that we're seeing here. So the forward head posture is really, really, really common. And even like a chin poke now is becoming more common. So there's always been kind of the head down because we drive, we sit at a desk, um, sit in this kind of city watching the TV and we might slump a little bit. So the forward head, even if you're gardening, so if you're any kind of hobbies that we have, like drawing, even reading, everything's kind of head forward and down and gardening and we're rounded so we need to spend time moving our body in the opposite way like arching the back head back um, and opening the chest and working the muscles around the back of the shoulders back of the neck and strengthening the back that that will all help to realign the posture and when we have good posture we have less pain or perhaps become completely pain free um, but it's not it's not a short term fix it's something that we've got to be uh, working on and kind of aware of aware of and just trying to correct every day. So hopefully when I'm talking about posture, we all sit up a little bit straighter in our chairs and we, oh, and we correct it. So even just doing that more often. Um, quite a common thing that I see here. So we do have like our chest tends to slump and that means our chest muscles, this, they're not active. They're not kind of strong and active. And we even have like the sagging muscles in the chest. So we even good posture and opening the chest muscles can help to lift as well. I see people that talk about, like really slim people that talk about if I could just get rid of this tummy. Well, actually it's just because of their posture, they're kind of rotating the hips forward, they arch the back and stick their bum out, which pushes the tummy forward. <laughs> and it's amazing if you get to, if you did it yourself and stood in profile looking into a mirror, pulled the shoulders back and rocked your hips back slightly, it's like you've just lost two stone, <laughs> like that. <laughs> So it just alters, and then and then that takes the tension out of the lower back, and I'll show you some of that standing up. Um, but we noticed everybody's sort of starting to do this as they're <laughs> talking. <laughs> See, I could just I'll just just have just have me like playing on your phone all day. Just don't look at the phone because that's not good for your posture. Yeah. Posture, <laughs> Shoulders back. Shoulders back. But the chin poke um, is becoming a common one now. So it used to be sort of just looking down, but now because of phones, so if I just demonstrate holding the phone now, we even do this and we start really like, it's quite excessive poking the chin forward now. Um, and that's, you see that in young people so much now. Like I always say the postural habits set in and start to cause some pain or, or niggles before, usually before we're even 30 years old. But um, now we're seeing it in like 15, 16 year olds with like really bad posture. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I notice that with a lot of my clients and their kids. It's you know, young scary. teenagers having bad shoulder and neck problems is quite worrying. Yeah. And there's a lot, a lot more anxiety with young children now as well. There's a lot more, you know, like the social media and constant bombardment and trying to compare themselves to, you know, all of these images that aren't real and, yeah. perfect lives that aren't real and all of that so there's a lot of anxiety with it and then something I'm going to come on to is how our posture actually can massively affect anxiety as well so yeah. it's really like quite a quite a bad aggressive cycle mm. um this slide here I don't kind of want to be on this for too long but this slide just shows how sitting um affects our posture as well so when we're lying down, not that we can do this all day, but when we're lying down, there's very little, there's not really any load on our spine and our back can hopefully relax and the joints can open up a little bit. And so there's more space for the discs, the fluid in the discs that are in between the vertebrae. Well, as soon as we can get up and stand, there's a little bit more pressure on the spine, but it's good pressure. 
So this um, image, the image from left to right is just showing our back angle and then the angle of our back, the effect that that has on the pressure on the discs. So the, the, that kind of thing that looks like, um, oh, I'm thinking like a Constantine. Yeah, go on, Constantine. Um, that's trying to depict our spine from the, from the base of the skull all the way down to the lower back, how much pressure's on there. We want it to be that 100% range where the, the um, guy is standing is good. That 100% is good. It's, pretty, it's, it's safe. It's a little bit of pressure, but it's okay. There's that nice space in between. So if you think about the vertebrae, the bony bits down the spine, in between those, there are fluid sacs, the discs, um, that allow our spine to kind of move around and keep it fluid. And it is literally like oil in joints. The more pressure that we put on and that those discs get compressed in between the bones, um, that's when we can start to have problems like feeling like the spine's crumbling, like it's bone on bone. And when we have things like herniated, herniated discs and slip discs, they're starting to be forced with the pressure in between the two vertebrae, forcing the disc out of position. And that then that can push on nerves and cause a lot of pain um, down, the, down the spine and quite often like down into the leg, even the arm, and the buttock. So, as you can see there, that the next, the next position is not bad. That's pretty good. That's the best ergonomic position to sit in is to be seated 110 degrees. So you've got a slight lean back. Um, I would also add to that to slightly rock the hips back. So I don't know if I can actually show you here with how I'm sat or not, but not to arch the back. So that picture for me is missing something that lean, leaning back, but then try and roll the hips back. So your lower back rounds into the chair slightly. So we're not arching like that because that causes, you can just have a try of it. And if anyone's got lower back pain, you'd feel it straight away. If you kind of rock the hips forward and arch your back and start like that, you'd start to get some back in here. If you rock your hips back and let your lower back, this lumbar spine roll into the chair a little bit, that should feel more comfortable. So even just doing that in your chair, by the way, called pelvic tilts, is a good exercise to do to help to mobilize in the lower back. So that's a good one for lower back pain. Just through the day when you're working, you can just kind of rock the hips backwards, backwards and forwards. And that should help to alleviate any pain or tension that's building up. So as we move along that image, the pressure gets worse. So sitting up nice and straight, nice and tall is actually not very good because you can see that's added another 40% on the pressure and started to compress the disc with the orange arrow. Um, that's more effectively, it's kind of just more gravitational force. And then leaning forward, again, that's all to do with the head coming forward, the shoulders and everything coming forward. That's a lot of pressure on the spine and especially on the muscles on the lower back. So that's a lot of pressure. Anything where we're leaning forward, you can see that, that it's just like the sensation of a lot of, a lot of load on the low back. So just try and be aware of whenever we're sat, say at the desk, if you're at the laptop and then kind of leaning forward or you're reading and working on something and starting to collapse forward, try to kind of just actually sit back a little bit. Just literally kind of move yourself back, sit back, rock the hips back. And that's immediately going to take up some of the pressure in your spine. Um, those are, I think, pretty much the main, yeah, I quite like this one. The evolution, or as I like to call it, the devolution of man. So just showing that um, with the modern, the modern technology, the industrial revolution, these last two, and then the technological revolution, that we're going back to the posture that we um, predate man. And we're becoming more rounded and closer to the ground. And that's not, not good for us. I'm just going to stop the screen share and come back, I think. Okay. So, um, what we need to work on is actually strengthening the muscles down the back of the, down the whole back of the body, actually. So, even like the buttock and the glutes, because they can be a cause of lower back pain. So, because especially if we're sitting on our bum all day, it's not really doing any work and we need to strengthen muscles down the back of our body and allow some opening and stretching of the front, which includes the abdomen as well. 
and stretching open those abdominal muscles and improving mobility, full range of movement. So lots of people will think, oh, I need a good stretch out. They'll stretch, they'll go for the massage, but actually a massage around the back helps to relax the tension, which is good. But if we're not also building some strength into the muscles, and if you think of strength as being integrity and stability into the muscles, then those, these joints are just gonna to start to go in the wrong direction. So just stretching isn't going to solve any problems. If all you do is stretch and have massages, in time it could get worse there needs to be a balance everything is all about a balance and it's balancing strength flexibility and mobility in the front of the body the back of the body on the most basic level so um our posture as well so i mentioned about anxiety our posture we'll do a little experiment really affects our breathing breathing ability breathing uh, affects our anxiety and how we feel our confidence so if you just sit nice and tall, if we sit in our chairs, we're really nice and tall and our shoulders are gently back and drop down. So it's not just shoulders back. Some people pull their shoulders back and up and we want to relax them down. And if you just try and breathe, so just breathe out first and then take a nice deep breath in. You can breathe in through your nose or your mouth. Ideally, it's through the nose to help kind of cleanse and detox and moisture the breath, but and then just out. And if you want, you can close your eyes and breathe in. And even take your hands just to your ribs. So around just kind of chest area, the lower ribs, because it's a bit uncomfortable around the top. And breathe in and out. And as you breathe in, try and think about filling the rib cage as though you've got, so your lungs, you're filling them up like two balloons. Trying to take as much breath as you can and then breathing out. And you should also feel your rib cage opening up, literally filling into your hands. And if you can't just think about when you breathe in, you're trying to draw the breath into the back of your rib cage, the sides of your rib cage. How our lungs function and improving lung capacity is really important for respiratory conditions, asthma respiratory health which you're all quite focused on at the minute and just breathing in and out feeling your rib cage moving noticing how you're feeling yourself and then breathe out do one more time take a breath in and we'll hold it this time breathe in as big as you can a really huge breath like filling up two balloons the rib cage is expanded and try and hold it Try and relax your shoulders down low so they've not come up towards your ears and then breathe out. And just rest your hands back down. And just notice how you feel as well. How does that make you feel? It's nice. Hopefully a bit calmer. Yeah. And we've all been having a bit of a You've been listening to me talking, so hopefully you're a bit calmer anyway. But if you can just imagine through the day feeling like all of the chatter in your mind and your to-do list and everybody wanting to do different things, so you putting pressure on yourself with your deadlines and time scales, and especially if you're at home as well and trying to juggle that around things at home and and the shoulders. I find it just gives me um time to just stop and refocus, and I've done that and take a few breaths. A few breaths. Definitely. Calm, definitely calm, my dear. Yeah. And that's all it took was just a few breaths. Just, and because I was saying, you know, giving you some visual instruction of filling balloons and feeling your chest expanding, that's what you were focusing on because I was asking you to do that. That's what you were thinking about. So everything else fell away. Everything else just went quiet, hopefully. And you did just come back to yourself. How are you feeling now, the moment? So it's a bit of, you know, mindfulness. How are you feeling right now? And it's just a little reset and you can go and deal with whatever you're going to deal with in a much calmer state of mind rather than a oh what now kind of thing so even just doing that can have a really huge impact on how you deal with the next thing that's in front of you or the next the rest of the day if you now allow yourself to just think right the day's gone on it's a little bit stressful and get a little bit tired and you just start to let your posture slump so if you just let everything slump a little bit 
Maybe you're even leaning forward, typing in a keyboard. Thanks, Anne. <laughs> um, so shoulders are forward. Even if you think about the position of your ribs now. So we were sat nice and tall and there was space between our ribs and our hips and there was space for the stomach and the organs. And now if we kind of just slump down, and everything's a bit squashed and the, the lungs are actually literally pressing. It's like the lungs have just squashed into our stomach, into all our digestive organs and everything's a bit squashed in a small space now. They can't function as well. But now sit like this, slumped, shoulders forward and take a nice deep breath. Without straightening up, take a lovely deep breath and fill your, lung, fill your lungs. In your <laughs> Can anybody? Nope. <laughs> oh, it kind of gets to maybe here. It doesn't go wide. To, it's not possible. And if you think about the position when we were sat here, the lungs, we've tilted forward. The lungs are just like, we can't, we've squished them as well. So if you're sat like that, and your mind is on all of the things you're trying to do, even if they're not stressful things, but you've got things that you're trying to get done. That's a good, good amount of pressure, good amount of tension, stress to get stuff done and adrenaline and all of that good stuff. But that's causing, that's starting to spike the cortisol as well. That's starting to spike the stress hormone in the body. And then we can't get the breath to rebalance that. So the whole time, anxiety is building up. Someone else has just come into the session. So the whole time we're doing that, we're not allowing the body to try and combat that rise in stress hormones and in, in anxiety and in cortisol. So we're not doing ourselves any favors because we're allowing the mind as well to, to kind of take control on the do, 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 do and pressure. We've lost sense of everything else and the body's all slumped. We're not functioning, even like the digestive organs aren't functioning properly. Everything's blood flow. So to try and correct and sit tall and carry on with your work is great. That's fine because you can breathe better. But try and breathe past here. Try to take the breath. Hey, Christine. Hello. Hello. I right. miss you. Hello. <laughs> Um, so to try to consciously get the breath to come lower and wider and expand. Because another thing is we've got uh, the intercostal muscles in the ribs, which are also around the back. And if we're not taking full breaths, that's a, the best way to get those muscles to stretch is to take full breath, expand the rib cage, and it stretches. Like think again about the tissue of a balloon, of the tissue, I think of muscles, but the fabric of a balloon stretching as you expand it. It's exactly the same for all these tiny little muscles that we don't think about. But those tiny little muscles can actually cause pain when they get too tight and then they're, they're never becoming like flexible, pliable muscle tissue. So that simple breathing serves all kinds. It just helps the body function better. It, absolutely balances out um, your fight or flight response and the stress hormone and all of that, as well as just doing a little bit of mindful bringing you back to the moment and that everything is okay and get on with it, but it helps with posture. So I also just, that's the first habit really is try and sit up tall, roll the hips back a little bit and take some lovely deep breaths. That's like mind, mind, body, pain, everything. Um, if we do, if, is it okay if we now just got some kind of practical exercises? Yep. And uh, I've got a mat back here. Mm -hmm. Not everyone will. <laughs> we'll do a little bit. But I'd like to show you some exercises you can do seated, standing, and some down on the mat if people want to do that as well. The first thing I would say is that whole head forward chin thing. So if you try and think about having like a tennis ball, under your chin and you need to hold it there so it's like a chin tuck you need to hold the tennis ball in position so I'm going to turn side on as well for some of these or the not very nice way of saying it and I'm going to do it because never mind it's like you're trying to create a double chin it's not sexy but it's good for you <laughs> but if we try and do that lovely posture first and think about the shoulders back and then tuck the chin, so you're trying to hold a tennis ball. 
And then if you can, that tennis ball turns into a little peach or nectarine, so even smaller, more of a tuck. But you're trying to hold it down into that little, little divot there in the breastbone, collarbone, collarbone even. And hopefully you feel that length in the back of your neck. Yeah. It lengthens and elongates. Whereas when we're kind of forward like that, it's lengthened, but there's pressure on it. And you probably can feel it pull down the shoulders as well. You can feel that strain down the back of the shoulders. Whereas when you sit tall and tuck the chin in, it's lengthening, but taking the, the weight and the pressure off the, the neck muscles and bones. So a little chin tuck, but also try and press your head back a little bit. Or think about your, ear, your ears. Like if, if you imagine somebody standing behind you, kind of pulling you back by the ears, but you're trying to keep that little neck to me tucked. And you probably will feel that coming down into the shoulder blades, but that's a strengthening action. And if you just did that and took a breath, tucked your chin down your little nectarine and imagine something, somebody pulling you back by the ears as you try not to drop the nectarine. So you're trying to move the head back, not leaning back, just trying to glide the head back. Okay, doing a bit of that, that starts to strengthen and shorten the muscles in the back of the neck and down here. So that can help, those chin tucks can really help. And sometimes it feels uncomfortable because the head's been here for so long. But those can be good. Another, this one's a lovely thing to do, just pull your shoulders up towards your ears and then relax them down. So literally just shrugging the shoulders. So let's breathe in and pull them up and then drop down. And breathe in. So if we can do that without the head forward and just pulling it back and just visualize the tension melting from your shoulders as you do that as well. You pull it up, create tension, then let it melt. And you can even just start to glide the shoulders now, gliding up and gliding down. And up. And then just keep your shoulders pulled up really gently, not too tight, not too much tension, just keep them there and let your head roll to one side. So your earlobe towards your shoulder and with the shoulders pulled up, try and really gently roll your head back around to the other shoulder. So it's like you've created a little bit of support here and a ledge, a little rounded edge to support your head. You've got we need to be careful with this one because that might feel so alien to some people and the neck could just be feeling so stiff. But this is a really good one for starting to... So I mentioned about lack of movement, lack of mobility being a big cause of pain. This is a mobility exercise for the neck. So it's trying to combat your head being forward, chin being scrunched down and the back of your neck being too tight just nice and gentle if it's feeling okay and if it feels like it's easy you could even relax your shoulders down a little bit and continue and let your head roll back a little further as you roll take a nice deep breath now you might have some crunching and clicking and it's just gonna say that i've got lots of crunching going on <laughs> so that's okay if it causes if it causes shooting pains or like a pinching sensation then I would say bring the shoulders back up and either reduce the range of movement or just gently reset your head and stop altogether. So it's one to be really cautious of. So if people have got um, problems in, if there's like broken vertebrae problems in the neck, be really, really cautious of that one. And you can just start with a gentle chin to chest rolling side to side. And then you can kind of just gently rock the head back with the shoulders up. So it's something you'd, I'd say start really gradually. And if it's feeling okay, you can just slightly in, increase the range of movement by letting the shoulders drop and letting your head come back further. But never never go straight to kind of this position, forward or head like that, to shoulders down, rocking head back doing that, because that can just be too much, too much to soon, so it's gradual. Shall I take a breath? Because I did say I let people ask questions as, as we went through. Shall I take a breath and see if anyone wants to ask or make any points? Or... Is everyone all right? Yeah. All thumbs up? Yeah. yeah all good, yeah. Thank yeah. You. All right. Yeah. Just once I get talking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're like. <laughs> this, 
this one um, is kind of about trying to arch back. So you can do this standard cedars lying down. It's about trying to sort of arch a little bit. And it's more about trying to get everything back. It's nice to do. So I'm like rolled up blanket prop. It's nice to do with a rolled up blanket or something. So probably thinking more from people working from home. That's it, Christine. We were just saying that children need to learn about this stuff, like at school age. So she's just starting her grandchildren off early with this postural education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Zoom to see what was going on. I didn't realise you were doing a full session. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> what was that? He's having his milk now, so he'll, he'll be quiet. <laughs> he'll be off in a, in a uh, trance now. Be or not so many people will have one of these, but some people will, you know, if you kind of do plies and you've got one of those stability balls, some of you do, then that's quite a nice thing to just pop around about between the shoulder blades or just slightly below and just try and kind of arch back. And again, think about pulling the shoulders back and trying to arch back, allowing the head to come back. Again, nice and gently, nice and gently, and only going as far as feels good. Or the rolled up blanket or towel or whatever you might have at home to kind of, to do that with. It works much better on probably the height chair that haley has got there, because mine's a bit too high up the back really, but that's okay, I can still kind of just open out and then come back up, but that's helping to stretch open. If you kind of just pull your arms back a little bit, so you the, the part, your palms are facing forward and you feel like you're pulling your shoulder blades together as well, like the head's got back. It's stretching open, the, the muscles get really tight in the front of the shoulders, the chest, and down the biceps. And then you can come back up. So if you need to, if that makes you get a little bit dizzy or woo in the head, then you can just kind of sit back up take a breath, regather, and then come back again. But just spending a little bit of time doing that, maybe between five and 10 times is really nice. I'm um, saying that, is it really nice? Does it feel nice? <laughs> it does, it's a nice stretch, isn't it? It good, isn't it? Um, rotation is really important for us. So another one that you can kind of just sat in a, sat in a chair is taking your hands in a prep position or, um, arm position in front open the shoulder so we're always want to think about pulling the shoulders back so you could kind of imagine an elastic a, a band here and we want to try and pull it together or there's a tennis ball between your shoulders and you're trying to squeeze the tennis ball between the shoulder blades and then stacking the arms and rotate this is a really good one to do seated we can do this one standing but hips tend to rotate when you're sat down your hips can't move so your spine has to move Okay, just look to your wrist, so just if you've got a bracelet or a watch, or just look to the wrist area as you rotate so that we don't overdo it in the neck. And we can breathe with this one as well to help the movement. A nice breathing in and breathing out. So as we do that, that's helping that whole thing of the rib cage expanding. If you breathe in, and it doesn't really matter how you do it, but Maybe breathe out as you rotate out, breathe in as you come to centre, breathe out as you turn the other way, in as you come to centre. And if you can imagine there's a thread in the crown of your head and you're being pulled up towards the ceiling, lengthened and lengthened, so the whole time as you rotate, you're getting even taller. And we're still trying to hold that tennis ball under the chin. And if anyone knows about the core muscles, you can gently pull your belly button in towards your spine or imagine you're wearing a corset very gently around your middle and that will just help with that lower back. And then just relax. Because we can get quite tight around here, around this section and down the lower back. So when, when you were rotating, hopefully you could feel how that was starting to stretch into each side around the back as well as getting some rotation through the spine, which is like movement in the joints is like WD-40 for the joints. Right. So it kind of turn us from feeling stiff and wooden or tin man into a straw man. <laughs> a bit more integrity than that, but oh, like everyone to be nice and floppy and loose at the end of the, of the session. <laughs>
Okay, so I mentioned about rolling the hips back in your chair. So that's like a really easy one to just sit tall and then let your hips roll back and then up and roll back. So that's good when you're driving as well. If you're sitting driving and you think, because quite often you can kind of go, oh, posture, and then over arch the lower back. But if you just rock the hips back, that stretch and stretches and opens any tension in the muscles in the lower back. And just gently, just, <sighs> okay. So I'm gonna to switch to some standing exercises now. So if you wanna join in, don't forget. Okay. I'm in my more familiar spot now, the mat. <laughs> okay, so standing, you can do the chin tuck. So just really quickly, you can do the chin tucks again and think about the posture. So rather than being here, it's really good to think about that plumb line of earlobes, shoulders, hips, and ankles, and do your little chin tucks. A really good one to do, and you don't have to do this, you don't have to do this now, but just a really good one to do is stand with your back to a wall, your feet about a foot in front of the wall, and see if you can get your shoulder blades to press into the wall, rock so that the back of your hips also touch the wall, and try and tuck your chin and get the back of your skull onto the wall. So that's quite a good thing to aim for. Haley, I think you'd be able to do it because that's like excellent posture that you've got there. But often people will try and do this test and it's really hard to get the shoulders back under the wall because the shoulders are so rounded and the head so used to being forwards that it's really hard to do that and you'll feel pain. It's really interesting just to try because you'll feel the pain in different parts of your body that just really shows up where the tightness is. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong camera there. I should be better at that. <laughs> So always a really nice one is just to roll the shoulders. So again, you can do that seated or standing, but just rolling your shoulders generally back. So some people might go, oh, that feels nice. That's fine. You can roll the shoulders forwards a few times, but then try and get into a nice habit of rolling them up to the ears, back and down. Because again, that's helping to encourage opening some space in the front of the shoulders and the chest. And you'll start to feel, it's gentle, but you'll feel your work in the back of the shoulders. Okay, this one's a little test just to prove kind of where you're at, what you're feeling in your body and how much these exercises can help. So um, the guys who run right now you know this one quite well. So just gently pull the shoulders back. I want you to take one thumb in front of you. Like give me a thumbs up because you're really enjoying this session. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Double, double thumbs up, thanks. <laughs> so bring your thumb back. So you're keeping your arm quite straight, soft bend, bring your thumb back. Try to, just try not to let your lower body move so much. It's just gonna be the upper body. Turn your head to look at the thumb and think about trying to pull your thumb or your arm back as far as you can and you're turning your head as far as you can. Notice where your thumb is in reference to the room, how you're feeling in your neck and down your shoulders, just what you're feeling, how tight you're feeling, and then come back to center. Okay, we'll do that with the other side as well. So this is our, this is our base, baseline, although we've already done some work to release you, but pulling the thumb back, turning the other way, so you can tell, you, you might be able to pick up now whether you feel tighter on one side, one shoulder than the other, perhaps your head moves further in one direction than the other. And then come back to center. Just remember those two positions. Take your first arm back up. Sorry. <laughs> with, so your, the first arm that we check, we're going to work that one first with the elbow bent and then just kind of roll circles, draw circles. So we're trying to lead with the elbow, but actually it's the muscles, it's the movement of the shoulder, the upper arm and the shoulder joint and the shoulder blades moving. So if you, if you can feel that, if you can do that, then you could maybe get those fingers and feel how much that shoulder blade is actually moving when we do that. So this is nice because it's helping to unstick some of that tension where the shoulder attaches on the back of the ribs. And again, this is gently mobilizing stretching here. It works the deltoids in the top of the shoulder a little bit and the muscles around the back of the shoulder, which don't get worked very often. Then just relax the arm down. 
the more that you do that, the more you'll be able to do before the muscles hurt. Relax it down. Okay. And then take that same arm out in front. This one's a stretch. So we've worked the muscles in the back and now we're going to open the front. So bring your thumb back again, but turn your head the other way now. So you're trying to press the thumb back, turning your head to look over the opposite shoulder. And then come back, eyes and thumb to center or in front of you. Take a nice deep breath in. And then breathe out, take your thumb back again and your head the other way. Try and relax both shoulders down from your ears. Let's do one more time, come to the front, take a breath. And then breathe out, stretch. We'll just hold this a little bit longer. Hopefully you can feel that you're stretching down from the earlobe down to the neck and through to the arm. And then come back to the center, release that. And then we'll do the other side. So bending the elbow, pulling the shoulder back a little bit and doing that kind of action. I don't know how to describe it really. I said to someone, imagine you're cleaning windows, but it's not really because <laughs> funny shaped windows. <laughs> I live in a rounded greenhouse. So you're rolling it back. So this is quite nice because this is kind of like self massage for those tight muscles, but it's helping to stabilize them a little bit, but really loosening off some tension. And then relax the arm down, give the arm a little shake. And then take the thumb back up, stand in tall, relax the shoulders. Bring the arm out, let's breathe out, turn your head the other way. So you might already be able to notice which side you've got more tension in the neck. And then come back to center, take a deep breath in, and then stretch, breathing out slowly, pulling the thumb back, turning your head as far as you can over that shoulder, and then to center. This is a brilliant one, by the way, again. I worked with someone with this last year and she's had neck pain constantly for 10 years. She did this for three weeks and she hasn't had neck pain since. So she does it kind of regularly now, just to stave it off. Good. Okay. So after that, it can be quite nice to do your gentle chin to chest, rolling your head from one side to the other, so earlobe to shoulder. And then if it felt okay for you, you could pull your shoulders up and do a nice gentle rotation around the back. So your head rolling back around the top of the shoulders. And then relax the shoulders down. Now, I'm showing you to open the chest, pull the shoulder blades together. All right, so we relax, we open, pull the arms back. So from the side, So the shoulder blades pull in together, the arms come back. This is, in Pilates, this is called the dart exercise, but we're just doing it standing up. And if you can kind of think about tucking your little nectarine under your chin at the same time, then so much the better. And then just relax. We're gonna go back to that test that we took just a few moments ago. So if you take one arm out in front with the thumb up, Remember where that thumb got to and how far you could turn your head. So let's go again without letting your, your legs or hips go. Pull the arm back, pull the thumb back. Turn your head and see if you can get much further than before. Come back, come back to centre. Did you get further? Yeah, you can feel the difference. Yeah, excellent. And the other side. So this is just the test just to kind of prove how much of a difference this makes. And also so you can see which side you've got more tension and tightness in. And bring it back. Further? Brilliant. Magic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that little combination, which is doing the test to see where you can get to, but once you know, once you trust that this works, you don't need to do the test really. You can just out of interest, but you don't need to. The, the order of the movement is to roll the shoulder, roll the shoulder, roll the elbow back, and just doing, you can do that as, you know, as many times as you want, but you don't want it to cause too much tension up in here. So relax it down, and then do this 
stretch. So you bring the arm back, turn your head the other way between three and five times, it's fine. Maybe a little bit more if you've got a lot of neck stuff going on that day. Doing those darts, pulling the arms back, pressing the chest forward, activates the muscles around the back, stretches the chest, and then just doing some nice mobility for the neck, chin to chest, each shoulder, shoulders up, rolling around the back. And if your neck's okay, you don't need to pull the shoulders up, you can allow to even improve the mobility and release tension in the front. That's that order, that little run of sequence there should eradicate neck pain. The only thing to be careful of is rolling your head back, but that whole sequence should help to improve that pain and that range of movement as well over time. Okay. Um, there's a nice little tip I can give you with a tennis ball for standing as well, is that you can stand with a tennis ball. So some people kind of get that pain down like under the shoulder blade or in between the shoulder blades and just underneath. You can pop a tennis ball or even something firmer where you feel that, just press your back to it slightly and give yourself a little massage. Just rolling the tennis ball up and down. Okay. So just because that's quite a straightforward, it, actually, if you, do, you can even roll up a pair of socks quite tightly. If you don't have a tennis ball, roll up a pair of socks quite tightly and just give yourself a little massage. Quite good for the thighs as well. <laughs> so that's quite a nice little thing to do. Okay, how are we doing? Have we got time for a few on the um in an hour? So it's half okay. past nearly half past so, one. So Maybe real quick on, we'll wind it up if that's okay. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think it's more practical to do more seated and standing anyway, it's kind of more practical. But if anyone did want to hit the mat and do so. Then doing cat and dog or cat and cow, quite a common one, and you'll see versions of it in yoga and Pilates, just on all fours, doing a cat where you kind of just rock the hips back, let your head relax, so you just completely let your chin tuck to your chest, and you pull your tummy up to your spine around the back. And then we, I always say, imagine there's a laser coming out of the tailbone. Imagine you're trying to send the laser along the floor behind you and then up the wall, that makes your lower back dip. Pull your shoulders down from your ears and look forwards. So again, this is postural because if the shoulders are rolled forward and up to the ears, you can't open your chest. If you roll the shoulders down, you can open your chest. So kind of rounding or arching your back like a cat, but try and get your laser from your tailbone to kind of drag down and pull between the heels or the knee, chin the chest. And then send the laser away from you and up the wall from your tailbone pull your shoulders down, open your chest and look forward. So they, those are excellent for mobilizing all the way up the spine. You can do them first thing on the morning at the end of the day, and if you're working from home, do a few during the day, just to prevent the back pain coming on. And then a nice stretch from there is just child pose, pushing your bum towards your heels, reaching your arms in front of you, taking nice deep breaths, just trying to rock the bum back, reach the fingers forwards, that's going to really stretch the back of those shoulders. And you can hold there for a few nice deep breaths. And then the last one that's really good is to do cobra where you just try and press the hips down. But a much more gentle version of that, which I prefer, is to be down on the forearms. So you can lie in front, bring your elbows under your shoulders, relax your shoulders down from your ears, and just try to look up and then relax the ribs down, and then lift and look up, and relax the ribs down. So again, that helps to pull the shoulder blades together, and it's kind of arching your back rather than rounding. And then you can have a snooze if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That was brilliant. So, we'll come back now. Thank you. So those are just, I'm trying to give a good range of similar kinds of movements that you can do in all positions to, to suit you. So some of those standing ones you can do while you go and stick the kettle on. Yeah. Just standing, you know, doing that with the arms and pulling up. Just the, the length of time it takes the kettle to boil can make a world of difference. So when you go back to sit at your desk and do whatever you need to do, or go and deal with the kids or whatever you have to do. Yeah. And also, um, if you've got therapists, if some of you were therapists, 
when when we are back to normal world where you can do, be hands on with clients and things like that, then there's a lot of that forward position, isn't there? So in between clients, trying to just think about opening back out and doing a few of those exercises in between sessions as well can be really helpful to get you through the day with far less pain. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that when I didn't used to do that, when I was doing reflexology all the time, I then spent most of my time going to get massages, re-releasing everything because it, it just built and built to the point that I couldn't grip my fingers by the end of the week when I finished working. So I had to learn to put these things in because otherwise I couldn't work. So yeah. Um, because otherwise it's like that constant stretching stretching of a band it, it can yeah. only go so far if you think about yourself just being there's only so much you're going to take yeah you're going to snap or just crash yeah so uh, definitely yeah and I think sometimes I've sort of slightly slipped on the in-between when I'm at the desk where I'm working with the coaching that yeah. um it was more of a reminder when I was doing the reflexology but sometimes I forget to do it at the desk like you said just going to get the cup of tea and then reopening it all back up so it's been a great reminder thank you good thank you what we all need is a kick up the bum isn't it every now and again <laughs> yes we do <laughs> yes and uh Andy's smiling there because he gets to kick up the bum every now and then don't you <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's brilliant. A few more tools, really, to just kind of put into action. Like I said, nothing is a nothing's a quick fix. It's things to try and try and just remember every day to try and make those sort of habits. And things like if you are working at a desk from home, trying to have your monitor at eye level and not down. So even if you need or your laptop, if you need to even just stack your laptop up on a few books or something like that, so it's more eye level. Because I've seen people say, "Oh, well, my screen doesn't lift up." We'll put it on some, put it on a pile of books so that it comes to eye level. And I have a Bluetooth keyboard, like a separate, just USB rechargeable keyboard, so that I'm not using the laptop keyboard, so I can move it around and kind of take care of the shoulders and wrists a bit more. So it's all kinds of things that we can do to help the the work, the working day to well, prevent the postural pain, really. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, Thank you. And, and then we can feel better about ourselves, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for having me and inviting me. You're welcome. And thank you for giving all these tips to my members. And um, uh, I know not all of them have been in here at the moment, but they all watch it regularly through the month and it will stay in. So, And we've got your contact details. Um, so if anyone wants to contact you because you do online classes don't you, do you want to quickly run through that so they know what you do thank you yeah i do online classes we have a range um they're all based on pilates exercises so everything is about trying to improve posture um it's all about trying to give yourself some time as well just to reduce stress and all of that kind of thing but it's all about posture relieving back pain hips, it's wellness Pilates that I focus on. So it's very, very much about rehabilitation from um, injury, post-surgery, trying to prevent pain, all of that kind of thing. But there's wonderful other things about just having a stronger body. Um, it tones the whole body, all of that. But we've got from beginners, we even do a seated Pilates, which is excellent for people who can't get down and do some of the stuff on the mat. If you struggle getting down enough or into some of the positions, we've got a fabulous seated class as well, that's great. Um, and we have mixed level all the way up to intermediate being a really challenging class. And then we've got a more kind of fitness and weight loss focus class as well, which is core and cardio. So a little, little bit faster and slightly more intense. Um, and I also do, so we do live classes and we also, you can also order a recording. If the times don't work for you, you can just say, oh, well, that's the level class that I fancy, or those are the levels and just order a recording and we'll send you. You have that link for a week to do as many times as you like. Um, and I do private sessions, personal training, one-to-ones as well. But whatever people need, I do tend to have a, a specialism in back pain. Okay. But I help people even with like recovering from um, hip surgery, hip replacements, knee replacements, um, abdominal surgery, things like that. So all kinds, but back pain is my thing. Brilliant. 
That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope everyone enjoyed it. So Sorry, I do a free class on a Sunday morning. I should say on my Facebook page, I have a free class every Sunday morning at 9.30. Again, it's in there. You can watch whenever you like, but to be on live, we do Pilates in pyjamas. Pajamas are optional. You can wear whatever you want. <laughs> and then Sunday at half nine, and anyone can just come join that if you want to just give it a try and see whether I'm your kind of person or not, or whatever. So that's on um, per, if you search at Perfectly Pilates UK. Brilliant. Thanks, Ellie. You're welcome. I hope everyone else enjoyed it. Um, I know you all know uh, Sarah, but I hope you got lots out of it like I have. And it was nice to meet you all. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye.